Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday. We are Debate Sensei. I am Jerry Kabika Miller, debate coach, professor. Uh, this is Matt Shapiro, JD. Hello. Hey, uh, Tim is not going to be with us today. Um, his uh, test to become a yoga instructor fell today, so he's out there doing that. We're going to discuss, um, I think, the hot topic that everybody's talking about, not just across the country, but apparently across the globe, uh, is a Tiger King. And uh, I, I don't know uh, how to look at the world other than through a debate lens, but I also know that not too many people look at it that way. So I thought sharing that would be a good way to do this. Um, uh, this whole topic started with uh, started with you, Matt. You were talking about like looking at like defending bad positions or looking at you know both sides of a debate. Debating debating both sides of a resolution yeah. was the uh, yeah. was my idea. And uh, yeah, Jared has definitely discussed how Tiger King kind of brings us to a, a, a pinpoint where we can focus on debating hard arguments that you may philosophically disagree with uh, and things of that nature. So we're going to try to, you know, discuss, you know, the Tiger King, Joe Exotic, yeah. and you know, the strengths and weaknesses that we can interpret from his show uh, into debate. Yeah, so the first thing is... Um, uh, well, I, I guess I kind of want to explain like how I came to watch it because I heard people talking about it. Before. I told you about it. Oh, you did. You did. And I still didn't want to watch it. Right. It was when I talked to my brother. My brother said, no, uh, you you have to watch it. it like, he, like, he, was, he said it's, it's basically more of a requirement than social distancing right now is watching Tiger King. <laughs> it's just like. It moves you, okay? I'm not yeah. saying uh, – everyone has their own feelings towards all these people. And my personal feelings were like – you just get your mind shattered every episode, I guess, with just kind of not like loving any single person, but more just yeah. like this story and how, you know, people are living life somewhere else uh, so different than myself, apparently. Uh, and th that that was just – you know, it's good TV. Everyone says it. And, uh, yeah, yeah. What I do mean, you really want? Yeah, I mean, I laughed, got, I cried. It was good. I think we got through it like three days or something like that. You know, oh, yeah. whole episodes a day. Uh, but you're, I mean, I, I think they split up the episodes really well. But like the reason why I'm like, yeah, we should we should talk about this for as far as debate is because I felt myself going back and forth. You know what I mean? It's like they would uh, they would present it like a point counterpoint yes you know what i mean it's like they would they would they would present joe exotic and they, oh what was her name what was the um carol baskin yeah yeah carol baskin oh my god she is a trip man she is a trip yeah it, it, okay so like let's start let's get let's get off the uh, ground here with some debate all right and like here's what i wanted to start with right because we've been talking a lot about online and uh presentational yeah. communication okay hey, real quick real quick check, check this out we got a oh. little thing uh, Tiger King, yeah netflix you get, yes it is yeah if you if you got netflix then just go for it man i mean seriously dive right Chris in fish good to hear yeah. from you yeah yeah um so you want to yeah, yeah yeah so presentational communication and i thought that joe exotic is a good example of some strengths and some weaknesses in yeah. presentational communication uh, and let's start off with the strengths, okay? So what I think Joe does good, and I realize he's not always, not in the necessarily debate context, but Joe, he is good at organizing the things in a way to show you that he's a big deal, okay? Yeah. And I like to take the example from like the gift shop. Like when you go into Joe Exotic's gift shop, you know, he lays out a, a framework of things to show you how big of a deal he is like he's got these ma like two magazines has his picture on the cover he's got those magazines out he's got you know <laughs> his own barbecue sauce he's got his own records that he the made sauce, man. and you're we bombarded got, you're like this guy sauce. must be a big deal it gives him credibility i think we need to make a debate sensei barbecue sauce sure i mean i agree we can make it out of pure alligators or something like that i don't know we'll see uh anyway so so that that he has a way to organize some things to make it appear like he is this big deal and he's a country singer and he's a 
uh, alligator farmer and a tiger, you know, tamer. So, yeah. So he can make people feel in his presence in his little world. He's good at creating this perception of who he is. Okay. And in debate, we have to do that, right? We have to kind of create our own credibility. And it's not necessarily using your own barbecue sauce, but you yeah, have to yeah, use. Like, I think he's a, like a really good example of like style over substance, right? And oh man, yes. That's, that stuff, that stuff wins, man. And it's it's frustrating when it wins. I'll be honest with you, it's frustrating when it wins, especially if you feel like you could see, you know. Um, and uh, if, if you could like, I could see past it. I could see that you're, you know, that it's it's you're more you're more sizzled than steak, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but still, like you gotta, you gotta respect it. I think, like you gotta. He personifies faking it until you're making it. I yeah, mean, like, yeah, yeah, and and that confidence, right? Like that. There's just something about the way he is that you know, uh, if you allow yourself to be entertained by him and you don't just kind of shut him down uh, altogether, like he can be someone you can listen to, and at least you can see him to like. He's persuasive in just kind of letting you share his world with him. Right. And like, that's what we have to do. Jared, like what, what techniques do you have, you know, to kind of like create this illustration of confidence, maybe in both performance and in like citations and stuff like that. What do you try to do? Oh, dude, like one of the, one of the big revelations as far as like delivery was pauses for me. I know everyone wants to go fast all the time and like, man, just a well-placed pause is, it's just like, it, it creates this this sort of void in the room and everyone's like waiting and it's like it creates it lets the emotion percolate yeah. is the word i'm gonna right i mean yeah 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 i mean just kind of like like uh putting putting yeah putting putting yourself out there and um uh oh what's her name again you just said it carol baskin carol baskin man like she and, and so She's got good arguments, you know what I mean? She she really does. And like I think her case just on face is persuasive, but then it becomes this sort of like like character debate with her. It wasn't it wasn't direct on the substance, you know. Oh, to some degree it was though. And I'm gonna I think we ought to talk about that. Next. I want to talk about a little bit of that. Uh I have that down on my list of like how to I mean we could get into it right now. How, yeah. I think both of them are good at focusing only at the strengths in their own argument. They, yeah. they do not acknowledge uh, the other side as much as they can. Uh, yeah. You know, the, how, how's that? Is that a fair assumption? Yeah. Well, like the others, like they try not to focus on what their opponent is focusing on. Yes. You know, like, like they focus on their opponent, but it's like character assassination. You yes. Know, from, from Joe to, to, to Carol. Sure. Uh, and in, there's some legitimate things, you know, you're like that's suspicious and right. you should probably look into it and that's cool. But even if it's true, that doesn't def like her guilt doesn't prove your innocence, you know, yes. that's yes. always frustrating to me. Always. Frustrating. It's one of those things where we were talking about a couple of weeks ago and I don't mean to bring this up, but that's what we were yeah. talking about. It was like, if I say, uh, you know, uh, Jared is dumb, <laughs> that is not enough, right? Like in a debate yeah. round. If, if Jared says we need to mine the moon and I get up in, in my response, I say, Jared is dumb. That's why you shouldn't <laughs> vote for them. Like you asked that's, <laughs> that's essentially what is going on in Tiger King for the most yeah. part. Right. Like no one's answering the, uh, I, you know, I will say uh, Carol Baskin would tell Joe what you're doing. Breeding tigers is immoral. And Joe would look at Carol and say, no, your definition of morality is different than mine. And so there are these fundamental premises, I think, that do come out. But what happens we, is we the say, like there's gonna be spoilers. Like if sure. you're watching right now, like we're gonna we're we're gonna spoil this for you. So um like oh, this is a spoiler yeah. alert. Yeah. Uh but this is also you're this you're watch the show, you'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh my point is just to say, as far as the argumentation goes. Their tactic yeah. that me and you are talking about is very much a diversionary, non-direct. Uh, although they do get their main premise out, they typically won't have nuanced argument within once they start picking apart each other. They just kind of shut down and divert to a character there attack. There is one exception. There is one exception. And go, that, go ahead. Yeah, I think that that I think the critique that that Carol Baskin like her conditions for the tigers are, are just as bad. You know what I mean? Like, like knows, I think, but yeah, I can hear you. 
that's fair. Like, uh, fair. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> or like the hypocrisy and like, uh, you know, what Joe is always saying that she used to do what she's accusing him of doing now and how, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. You know what's funny is like that's the type of argument where I'd like to see even some of these presidential candidates kind of be like, I have changed, or like like people are allowed to say these things, and those are important things to say. And like that doesn't mean sh you have to just deny forever that you didn't do something if you changed your ways. But uh, you know, that's I don't know. I what I, let me let me ask you this, Jared. Like mm -hmm. when you're defending an argument that you don't necessarily philosophically align with yeah you know what what tactics do you implement that you maybe don't with a regular you know action or like or like let me ask you even more broad if you have a, a resolution that on one side you are scared about arguing what ta what do you do um i think i think i was asked this before uh and like Okay, so we just had this this tournament, right? Um, and so I have to kind of elaborate on, on my answer. And in this tournament, we had a bunch of impromptu examples. This is the asynchronous tournament that, that's that's happening right now. And I had a bunch of uh, a bunch of impromptu concepts that I put together. One of them was called uh, Miller's Law of Communication, and I thought it was awesome because it was you know my name. Um, but it says that it, to truly understand somebody, just assume that what they are saying is true right off the bat without prejudice and then try to find out why they believe that. All right. And so, like, it, when you talk about debating both sides, like what I what I what I try to do is I try to find what I think is the best argument, not something that I believe, but the one that I hear out of like I do research. All right. I'm like, all right, these are all of the sort of um all of the arguments uh, in favor of this resolution. They're not all the same. They're not all from the same camp. Okay. You got to like, it, once you start seeing that there's a bunch of different ways to affirm something, you, you have choices. So I've never run into the, the, the uh, position where there's only one argument that you're allowed to make and you have to make it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like yeah. you're given a thesis and that thesis is, is like open to interpretation because it's language, you know, it's a sentence. It's, it's not like, it's not like some sort of object that you measure. And so you interpret that in an, uh, in a number of different ways, a limited number of ways, but from those limited options, I choose the best one. And, and so I'm just saying like, all right, this sounds like the best thing I've heard in favor of this. Now, to extend that though, I think I have a really broad spectrum of things that I that 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 can affirm any particular. Yeah, and I've even noticed like when we yeah. when we have little discussions, like you know, Jared is very good at like uh, you know he's always has a, he always has an answer, and it may not even be in direct response to what you're saying, but there's like always like a it's a way to just alter the the thinking. Uh, I'm having a hard time thinking of an example, but. Um, well, here's a, here's a way the switch which puts it together. Um, is it important to be impartial to both sides of a resolution? I don't think you need to be impartial. Like, like what I'm saying is, I, I think if you recognize that while there is a way to identify something that's in favor and in opposition to a central point, there's a lot of options on the affirmative and there's a lot of options on the negative. And so... Yeah. You can't choose them all, just like the time limits. And so generally it, you cannot, right? Yeah, yeah. Like so, like you are required to focus in. And the more you can elaborate on something, the more options you have because you can it's, the only requirement is when you pick it, it has to fill your time. It has to be five minutes long. It has to be eight minutes long. Can I defend this for eight minutes? That's the only thing that you gotta do. And when you ask yourself that question, the options open up. You know what I mean? There's just so many different options. Like, yeah, I could defend that for eight minutes, even if at the end of those, you know, uh, the eight, my eight minutes or the overall 45 minutes for the debate, as long as I could still defend it to that point, you know, I could even do, I could do that with anything. Um, I think uh, I want to, I want to take a crack at uh, Swish Fish's uh, next question here. So, you know, is it important to be impartial to both sides of the resolution? And I will say, uh, you know, and in a situation where you are presented a resolution that you know you will be debating both sides, they say, you know, any most debate forums, you know, you'll be doing both sides, right? When you are presented with the resolution, it is paramount that you are able to be impartial 
in thinking that I am going to be able to figure something out no matter what they give me on both sides. That is not yeah. a question of if, it's just a question of yeah. what I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, so, on the, I guess on that level, yeah, you, I, I do think that you got a point. But there, on, the, like, on the flip side, right, in debate, once you are on one of the two sides, you are not impartial anymore. You are the yeah. opposite <laughs> of impartial. You have now become yeah. an advocate for one side. And in yeah. that regard, you know, we talk about being nice. I am not saying you shouldn't be respectful. I am never, even when I talk about bullying, I mean, you do it respectfully. Mm. Uh, my point is just that, like, you must advocate using every creative, you know, thought you can to persuade to win. You are no longer, and, and it is, I think, a strategy to come off as objective as possible. You always want to, you know, one thing Tiger King doesn't do is they seem to never acknowledge the other side and that seems to kind of discredit yourself because you don't seem to want to talk about what they're bringing to the table like in debate one part of i think this whole objectivity or impartiality that you're asking about swish fish is just like you want to be able to kind of be like i see what you're saying jared but you need to understand that like 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 you need to affirm that you're hearing people and that you're responding to them but like uh, in, in a non-partial way that helps your credibility. But um, never forget, once you are on a side in a debate, you are partial. You are af affirming. You are doing something for that side only. Sorry. Go ahead, Jared. Yeah. No, like I, the, the, the thing that, that Tiger King does is, is both sides are, strug are, are, are fighting to establish what the central issue is, right? And yeah. Um, and so Joe is trying to establish that the central issue is his facilities and he's like, freedom you know, of his ability to own and do what he's doing. I think yeah, that's probably like, a theme. I'm, I'm a professional. All right. Yeah. Like, like my facility, like, and, and so that's all the, like, like, look at all the stuff I have. Like I have a gift shop and this and that and everything like that. It's like, these, these are, you know, the, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of budgets like that takes you know, some sort of organization. And yeah. Like, like he focuses on that and says like her sanctuary isn't all that great. You know what I mean? So uh, I think, and she doesn't pay her employees either. You know what I mean? Like those are like, those are legit, dude. Those are legit. She, no, look, look, Joe exotic yeah. brings up some good points. And yeah. if they were to, if they could condense it down to an eight minute affirmative speech, I mean, that would be hilarious. If someone wants to go out there in the YouTube world and, and do that for us, that would be ridiculously great. Yeah. But but, but um, it, like, 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 it comes like, out in sparks, though, right? Like, it comes yeah. out like here and there. You'll just hear like, oh, like that's a, that's not just saying she's a you know crazy person. That's something yeah. else, right? Yeah. And he never wants to acknowledge the other way, though. It's like, hey, yeah. uh, were you doing <laughs> drugs the entire time? People like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, uh, what's drugs? <laughs> I'm having a good time, right? Uh, so, so they don't want to respond, but they will throw everything at the wall right like like fist to cuffs with words with those two yeah but like i i mean like now i'm starting to see articles on questioning whether or not tiger sanctuaries are a good thing you know what i mean because it's like all of a sudden it was always assumed and now people are like like that might be his victory because in the end like that guy was guilty of sin you know what i mean it's like you're you right know, uh, or at least uh, allegedly Right, that's what they just say. Absolutely horrible things, like objectively bad, like and all, like the most recent um, um, uh, sort of addition onto that was uh -huh. an interview, and everyone was just like, "Nope, no, nope, I don't like Joe Exotic. I'm not." They're like cutting pies with him at yeah. most. At best, they're like, "I don't want to see him die in prison." That was the that was the the yeah, most. Yeah, and I guess. This is a great idea right here to just disclaim that like me and Jared aren't like condoning either <laughs> anyone in this show. Right? Yeah. I think I think we're the whole point of debate and the whole point of this discussion is just kind of just bring out some things that like we heard and we you know thought about in the process of yeah, watching but, this little series. But the thing is, he has these legitimate arguments in just this ocean of character assaults, and so you know, that was his, like, that wasn't his main focus. If that was his main focus, like he might have had, I don't know. He might've done better. He might've done Look, better. So, so I want to go back to presentation. Okay. Like what, what Joe has some weaknesses. Okay. That's yeah. the, you know, <laughs> let's talk about some of Joe exotics, presentational communication weaknesses. Uh, my analysis of this starts with a couple of different aspects. Uh, 
I'll just list them and then we'll talk about them. The first yeah. is uh, attire. Uh, you know, <laughs> Joe doesn't. In debate, what do you do? You put it like until you really are an expert, you're, you're wearing a suit, you're, you're, you're doing everything you can to present yourself in a way that's like, I'm credible. You should believe me. Right. And we can talk about, you know, Joe Exotic's ability to like, you know, do that. And then uh, the other one is uh, his presentations as far as like uh, the way he presents his arguments. You know, and we were just hinting on like, it seems like when you watch that show, he'll have these moments where if you strung all that together you could write up a 1ac probably with some decent arguments but when in the moment when he's confronted he generally won't spout out a brilliant answer he seems to kind of just direct a, an attack and kind of and just move away because it's like hard to come up with all your great arguments at once right so the presentational organization of when he actually talks in response to attacks on himself so let's start with the presentation, Jared, of uh, attire and stuff. How important to you in debate is, if someone walked in a debate round looking like Joe Exotic, how would that affect your role as a judge, uh, you know, with the ballot? Well, like the the like the like the mullet and baseball cap on there. Yeah. Whatever you intend or whatever you took from that. <laughs> like, uh, I, he, man, he really he really owned it. Now, the thing is, like, I'm cool with people who, who, who own – this stuff and like if this guy's running a zoo then that's the type of environment now if he's coming into i don't know what like court i'm like yeah throw on the tie for court you know what i mean I, well joe for instance he ran for uh what governor and president and like yeah, he, yeah, he, he really still, he really didn't like he that's kind of what exa exactly what i'm telling you yeah joe yeah, yeah, signs absolutely. up for debate he signs up for your school I he's your that. What what do you do when he signs up? He shows up in the round. He's running the neg. What do you do? How so, how does does that affect I have him? Higher expectations than I do. Like if somebody's like coming in rocking that stuff, I'm like, oh well, this better be. Good. They better be really good. <laughs> yeah, better be. Good. <laughs> some people, there's some people who've done that though. They yeah. come in and they are just you know they're like I don't, like I don't care about what I'm. No, worried. it's it, it's like the they're hierarchy like, of debate. Right. Everyone yeah. starts off and they're like brand new they're like people wear suits doing this and then you're like i'm wearing a suit and then you're like <laughs> i have risen to the i can wear a sweater and you know walk in with a t-shirt and like you know i know the judge that's the big yeah. one and they're like they're wearing a t-shirt yeah. they know the judge you know they're giving them a coffee you're like oh well let's see how I, I think goes. you gotta do it like there's a certain level of cockiness that comes with dressing sure down. Sure. If you could bring it, you're, some people, yeah. Some people live up to it. Very, very few. I mean, like, I, if I'm thinking in my head about all the debate entries, and then the people who dress up, and then the people who don't dress up but are like, you know, killing it. It's a yeah. real small percentage. It really is, you know. Um, but and so, like, I mean, you, you have to you have to earn it. I think <laughs> so. One hundred percent. And yeah. like, I think the risk is. What people maybe don't fully understand or what I definitely didn't fully understand until I was forced to put on a suit uh, was like you – it's very – it's like you said. It, it's a little arrogant at a debate yeah. event, you know, when everyone chose to do this because they're trying to do their Sunday best, whatever you want to call it, and then you come in wearing a T-shirt. Like if you rock the debate, yeah, I will be you like gotta, this oh. guy – I, don't know. I, never knew, I never knew personally, you know, I mean, that I would just rock. very rarely. I mean, I honestly, when I see people at debate tournaments back in the day, it would be like, oh, they're wearing like these clothes. They must be good. And yeah. then you get to do a round and it's like, if they're not like, oh, you, yeah, you always communicate like they always do. It's like, unfortunately, you, that's true. I mean, you, I, they I mean, always for, are. Yeah. Just kind of. I put this shirt on just to talk to you all today. And this is my nicest <laughs> button down t-shirt. Let's, let's, let's do another one. Let's do another one. So it is just as important to present your side and attack the other side. Um, uh, and so, yeah, it, yeah, uh, I think, okay, I think the most important reason why you want to pr like prepare for your side, not just refutation, but uh, when you're on the neg, right? Um, because if they do something crazy and you're like, I don't know how to respond to that, you still have what you prepared. And not only that, but what you prepared is usually better than the stuff you think up at the last minute, right? Um, sometimes you do think of really good stuff right on the fly. Sometimes you do, but the preparation is is you. It's hard better. to rely on that. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like at the very least, you want that as the foundation for yeah. you doing. Like, like think about think about your topic. Think about what 
you would do on the affirmative before you come up with what you what you do on the negative, right? Think about the best answer, the arguments on the affirmative, the best ones, not the worst ones. You know, like that's what people do. It's kind of like, oh, well, if they make this mistake, I'll capitalize on it this way. I'm like, you can't plan for them to make mistakes. All right. It's like you plan the best argument that you can't like, like think about their best argument and then say, what is my best argument and how can I make mine, you know, in the end seem superior. And so like, yeah, you got to prepare your own side. You got to present your side. And then when the, the time comes, hopefully you see something and they use the remainder of your time for responding to them. And, and, and one thing I think people have a hard time doing is like you can use arguments in more than one way. Like if you have some argument that's your disad. Well, when you're on refutation, rephrase that same stuff in four point refutation. And like now you're kind of using that same information and directly attacking. So whatever yeah. this judge likes, you're doing it. And as far as your next question there, Swish Fish, by the way, thank you so much for participating today. Yeah. Uh, have they risen above the level of suits? No one, no one, no one ever, ever, ever rises above the level of suits. Uh, but I appreciate maybe, maybe when someone wears clothes for a little while, when they put a suit on again, it really kind of it really means something special for them to be, you know, these, you know, Uber debaters who are just like doing their own thing when they I, ironically wear a suit at nationals, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it means it, it will still mean something. And uh, Joe exotic needs to, to get up on that. Okay. So the second Jared really quick, I want to just finish, you know, uh, with this yeah. last point, how important is organizing your information in a succinct way? Uh, how important is that to persuasion? Uh, whereas, you know, and, and I, I'm almost going to kind of tie that as a logo style uh, argument compared to the Joe Exotic appeal to emotion, you know, go out there and just get people riled up. What, uh, so when you put in, when you put arguments together, I always thought that, um, Matt, I, I think I, you know, entered like most people do and they just kind of like say what's on their mind and it, you could kind of like corral your ideas around the sense stream of consciousness. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. And so like getting it down to, um, to, the, the power tags are, are just an, you know, underappreciated tool about, uh, I think that there's, uh, there's a great app, uh, it's called debate graph. Um, and it like forces you to, get condense your claims down to like less than like 70 characters right which is like seems like a really perfect sort of tagline you know long enough to maybe like string together like four maybe five words but getting it so like you have these really memorable catchphrases throughout your debate that focused in on these issues and and so like it solvency needs to have a really good sort of catchphrase you know what i mean yeah. Like you're hitting on kind of a point of like within organization. And I, yeah. I agree with you. Like, I don't yeah. like super, super generic taglines. Like yeah. I, you, you hear economy, like everyone just says economy, you know, it doesn't hurt to kind of be like two, three words that like make it a little more like economy is pretty vague. So like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? What are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, and don't make it long. But uh, I've even noticed in law, you know, I've been doing a lot of, you know, you read these cases and there's all this information and these people that your, your boss, they want to know like one sentence of what they need and like condensing down arguments into a tagline reminds me of the same thing. And so often, like, don't try to start with tag with naming your argument. You need to kind of like get to the nitty gritty of what you're trying to say. And then you'll have a really synthesized understanding of how to name it, uh, you know, one or two words that kind of really embody what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, like when you're, when you're tagging like solvency, uh, even yeah. if it's in an advantage, I mean, the easiest way is just to put the word works after your plan text. You know yeah. I mean? like, or you like know, mining the moon works. works. Mining the yeah. moon solves. Like, like just yeah. all, uh, uh, it, especially when there's small nuances between you and the other side, like just remind them using the tagline beyond just yeah. saying our economy. Like, like, yeah, we know like you guys probably both have an economy. So what, you know, it, it can be confusing even at times, but yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like just walking this, this sort of line between, you know, specificity and vagueness and, and things like that. I think that's yeah. a, an art form. That's it. Like, yeah. What I, really I also really wanted to just get in with the last few seconds here is just remember everyone that like you could write down the most brilliant arguments in the world, but you need to like allocate some time and make sure you spend that much time per argument in your speech so you can 
get the most out of each one of them because unlike Joe Exotic, you don't want to just get hung up on your first one and scream about that and start attacking credibility. Like you want to get through all of your arguments. Joe had a, good, a few good ones. He seems to not cover them succinctly yeah. in any one period of time. So, so try to try to focus on that in your presentational communication through the lens of doing opposite of Joe Exotic. I, I, I think it would be fun to think about other sort of movies that are, are put into like a debate Format. Framework, yeah. Like, like Tiger King was in a debate format. You know what I mean? It's like it was going. It was back a roller forth. coaster. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like like it was these two um, opposites, like yeah. antagonizing each other throughout the entire thing, and then one eventually wins. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, well, man, I, I, hey, on that note, no one wins in Tiger King. Yeah, I yeah. literally leave that show going like, justice is needs to be done more more justice needs to be done in more places i saw, I saw carol baskin you know toasting champagne and shit like, like that at the end of the thing so she seemed to feel like she won well i don't i don't really care about her subjective <laughs> opinion <laughs> i want more justice for everyone yeah anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. the tigers yeah <laughs> so anyways yeah. uh I that, mean, that it's, true, it's true. not like she didn't benefit, you know, if uh, she gets all those tigers, if it all goes under, I think something like that. I don't know how it works, but I don't, I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe yeah. there'll be more. Yeah, I know. It's, it, it ain't over, man. It's, Apparently it's, it's the biggest show in the world. So maybe there'll be more. I don't know. Anyways, let's do all it. Right. Jared. Well, that, that's our time, man. Um, so, uh, man, I want to talk about other, other movies that are like in debate format that people might overlook. I, I think that, that might be a recurring sort of topic that we do every once in a yeah. while. Uh, I'd love to hear some some uh, suggestions on uh, movies that like remind you of debate, or you know, it could be seen through a debate lens. Um, and we could talk about it. All right, everyone. If you've, if you've made it this far, you leave some comments of movies of or you know shows, anything episodes that you think uh, it would be a good discussion point. We'd love to hear them. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>